Good morning. FBI agents continue their marathon search of the home of security guard Richard Jewell, a prime suspect in the Atlanta Olympics bombing. They've now spent eight hours checking his apartment. A mobile lab and a bomb-sniffing dog are being used in the hunt for evidence. His truck was also being towed away for examination. This search is part of an ongoing investigative process and does not indicate in any way that Mr. Jewell has been charged with a crime under our system of justice. Jewell denies planting the bomb that killed two people. Back home, a 28-hour siege involving an armed 15-year-old boy in Western Australia has ended peacefully. The boy surrendered last night. He'd held police at bay at a remote Aboriginal community in the Pilbara region after allegedly firing four shots at a community member and another two at police. Wild winds have caused chaos in Melbourne, blacking out suburbs across the city. Worst affected was in the Dandenong Ranges and neighbouring areas. Power was cut to around 32,000 customers. High winds and recent rain made the task of repairing electricity lines all the more difficult. Pakistani cricket legend Imran Khan has won his two-year court battle. Khan was found not to have libelled former England cricket stars Ian Botham and Alan Lamb in a London High Court case that's likely to cost them almost a million dollars. The two had accused Khan of libelling them by calling them racist, low class and in the case of Botham, a cheat. I've been vindicated there that I never called anyone a racist, an underclass or a cheat, and that has come true. The world's largest and smelliest flower, the Titum arum, has finally bloomed in London's Kew Gardens. Plant enthusiasts have had their green thumbs crossed as they anxiously awaited the event. The giant flower, a native of Sumatra, was expected to bloom on Monday but failed to show. Dubbed the corpse flower because it smells like a mixture of rotting fish and a dead mouse, it hasn't bloomed at Kew for 33 years. In finance, the Australian All Ords closed yesterday at 2,180.3, up 49.5 points. Wall Street's Dow Jones Index closed at 5,524.47, up 42.54 points. Gold is at 386.80 US dollars an ounce, and our dollar is buying 77.27 US cents. Checking the national weather, patchy rain in Adelaide, Canberra, Perth, Sydney and Hobart, while other cities remain fine. Our next major bulletin is Sevens News at 5. And join us for the most extensive coverage of Olympic highlights on Seven Nightly News tonight at 6. Now back to Atlanta. <laughs> We're right on target for yet another great day here in Atlanta. The Opals take the court in their quarterfinal against the Russians at the Georgia Dome. A win will take them into medal contention. Across town at Morris Brown College, the Kookaburras face the Spaniards. This is a semi-final. A win takes our men's hockey team into the gold medal playoff. Over the next seven hours, we've got athletics from the Olympic Stadium. Michael Johnson continues his quest to become the first man to win the 400-200 double. The women take to the diving pool at Georgia Tech. Tonight, the springboard finals. It's hopping up here in Atlanta. It's day 12 of the Centennial Olympic Games. Seven Sports Center this morning. Your host is Sandy Roberts. And thank you very much, Craig Willis. Hello once again. Welcome back to Atlanta. For those of you who may have just awoken and joined us, then welcome to what should be another wonderful day of Olympic Games here from the Seven Sports Center. What a day it promises to be. Our teams are going to be to the fore once again. Let's have a look at some of the highlights of our program. 
Coming up shortly, our men's hockey team. Well, this is a semi-final, and what a match it should be. Australia up against Germany to decide who will go into the final. And our women's basketball is also going extremely well. They're attempting to advance into the semi-finals as they take on Russia. That match also starting very soon. A big night of track and field after a lay day yesterday. Quarterfinals of the men's and women's 200 metres featuring, of course, Cathy Freeman. Semi-final of the men's 400 hurdles. Finals of the men's 800. And two other finals in the women's 400 metre hurdles and the 100 metre hurdles. So a big night of track and field. And a big night, too, for our divers with the three metre springboard final taking place for women. That is just some of the action coming your way here on 7. Well, time now as we start our program to catch up with all the latest Olympic news with Kylie Gillies. 7 Olympic News, presented by Yellow Pages, official sponsors of the Australian Olympic team. Good morning. Wimbledon doubles champions Todd Woodbridge and Mark Woodford have survived a marathon three-set semi-final to advance to the gold medal game. With no tiebreaker in the third set, the two Woodies traded blows with Dutch pair Jarko Elting and Paul Harhus, with the Australians finally getting through 18-16 in one of the best matches of the tennis program. Let's hope it hasn't taken too much out of them for the final. A sensation at the main stadium this morning with world record holder Sergi Bubka withdrawing from the pole vault. Bubka is suffering from an Achilles tendon injury and quit without taking a vault. It's a shattering blow to the Ukrainian who also missed a medal in Barcelona four years ago. Controversial sprinter Dean Capobianco is set to run in the quarterfinals of the 200 metres. After being embroiled in a drugs controversy, Capobianco is under enormous pressure but ran well to qualify this morning. Steve Brimacombe has also qualified in a faster time than his teammate. Let's take a look at Capobianco's first round race. So lane one, in fact, vacant. The Denica not turning up. Kappa has to go out very hard because the Silver and Coda are outside of him. And then the other De Silva. And Loom going very well of Senegal. So Kappa Bianco back in about fourth place, but coming through strongly. Robson De Silva, who's been a great athlete. Kappa running hard. He's going to miss out on the first four. De Silva, De Silva it is. The two of them. Kappa fourth. They beat Code easily. Still on the track and Carl Lewis's hopes of a 10th Olympic gold medal have been dashed after being left out of the relay team. After Lewis won the long jump, there was pressure on the US selectors to include Lewis, but instead they've gone with John Drummond, Leroy Burrell, Mike Marsh and Dennis Mitchell. The biggest names in world cycling were on the streets of Atlanta today in the Olympic men's road race. Five-time Tour de France winner Miguel Uinderen led the star-studded field, which included professionals for the first time. But the big names all finished out of the medals. The gold going to Swiss cyclist Pascal Richard, out-sprinting Denmark's Rolf Sorensen and Brit Max Skiandri. And that's the news to the moment here in Atlanta. I'll have more for you a little later this morning. Stay watching for more 7 Olympic news. Brought to you by Yellow Pages, official sponsors of the Australian Olympic team. And Kylie keeping us up to date with all the Olympic news throughout the morning. Speaking of keeping you up to date, as far as our equestrian fans are concerned, we saw Mary Hanna just a short time ago, ranked 19, and she has a total after this performance of 1,383. So well done to Mary Hanna in the equestrian. As I said, her total rounding out at 1,383. And of course the equestrian continuing for the next few days with Lucinda Green and Stan Grant. We'll be crossing back to them throughout the day. Mary looks very happy and pleased with her performance. Ranked 19 and just repeating her score, 1,383 points. So from Equestrian, time now to turn our attention to basketball. As I said, it's a very big night for our teams with the women's basketball and the men's hockey. Now, I must tell you that these are starting within half an hour of each other, so we'll keep you up to date with each match in exactly what is happening. For the moment, though, it is women's basketball, a quarterfinal match between Australia and Russia, and we welcome our commentators, Phil Lynch and Linda Palmer.